you give a poor man a fish and you feed him for a day. You teach him to, a f- to fish. You give him, you give him an... Uh, no, no, no. Hello and welcome to episode 2 of Strength for Tomorrow Radio with me, Stuart Thompson. Thank you for joining me. If you listened to the first episode, you're going to get bonus points. Um, thank you for that. Um, today I've got a very exciting guest. I've got Jack O'Hare, who is the latest trainer to arrive at Cross Functional Fitness. Jack has been um, in and around the gym since about September time last year. I got to know him. I was recommended him very highly. And uh, yeah, all the clients love him. It's been great having him about. And now he's working for me in the gym. He's in Mondays, Wednesdays and Fridays. So he's been getting to know clients this week. He's been working hard and uh, working hard on programs. So Jack's going to be sharing a bit about how you get into fitness, what he loves working, what he loves about working with clients and uh, some more fun areas like his embarrassing moments in life. And um, yeah, hope you really enjoyed. We've also got our frequently asked questions and Jack is bringing us our joke of the week this week. So yeah, enjoy. Jack with me today. Thanks. Um, yeah, give him a big welcome. And um, Jack's going to be working cross functional fitness over the next number of months. And uh, yeah, I don't know if he'll keep me here basically. So we're going to do a quick interview just to get to know Jack. And um, yeah, hopefully you enjoy it. So, Jack, what is your name? Oh, my name is Jack, Jack O'Hare. Who is what? <laughs> what age are you? Uh, 20. 20. And what height are you? I'm 5'6. What weight? 26. 5.6.6 That's my height, yeah, my weight Your weight? It's like 62, 63 kilos And what's your pin number? <laughs> <laughs> what is your favourite meal? Uh, oh, it has to be like, pizza Pizza? I actually love pizza That's not something that you prefer sushi in I know, I know it's kind of, I have to be honest, like, I'm not going to sit and say like There's nothing wrong with that <laughs> We're not going to do the whole, you know, pineapple one pizza Oh, that pineapple pizza, yeah, yeah. What would be your favourite band or artist, would you say? Um, you know what, I actually like, really like uh, Kings of Leon. Kings of Leon? I actually really like Kings of Leon, yeah. Kings of Leon? They only have two, but like, quite two good songs, but New Somebody. And it's like, yeah. you know, I just think it's like, it doesn't even matter like what time of the day you listen to it. It's just, good to know. It's just on the other song. When you hear the radio, it's just like, that's, that's a tune. Like, yeah. I don't know, that's just a proper tune. Like, yeah. Even on a Monday morning, like, that's just a tune. Yeah, I'll give you that. Okay, this is a quick fire round. Books or movies? Uh, movies. Movies. Weights or cardio? Uh, definitely uh, uh, weights. Yeah. yeah, yeah, definitely weights. Starter meal or dessert? Uh, mm, main, main, yeah. Main, yeah. Main, yeah, main, yeah. Favorite, favorite sport? Uh, football, definitely football, yeah. Favorite team? Uh, Liverpool. That's why yeah. That's why That's why That's why you're here. <laughs> Most embarrassing moment? Uh, I've got probably like maybe two. Just two? I've got maybe like two. And you're only 21 and you're. Oh, I'm 20, yeah. <laughs> well, how much do you want me to say? Yeah, just, I, just, I just, one. just go for one. Just go for one, right. The most embarrassing one. Uh, the most embarrassing one. Uh, well, I said both of them, I've got my short ones. Okay. There was like, there was one says McDonald's and I stalled at the window, like that's pretty embarrassing. Like, has that been for? Nah, don't worry, don't worry. Really? Yeah, go ahead. And then no, there was once, uh, it was actually my birthday, and I took my brother down the street. It was actually it was my birthday, my 20th birthday. I was going down the street, just driving, I don't know, like, coming to the shop or something. And uh, I remember there was just this big, massive man behind me, like this big, never seen this man before. And he was crazy, this guy was going crazy. Like, I'd gone past the shop and all this guy was just going nuts. The actual, like, two, three cars behind me indicated. And, like, actually, like, I'd never seen this, but they actually turned because this guy was going nuts, crazy. And he went right up behind me, I tried to rent car, just going nuts. And I like it's not like me to get angry with it. I proper just went, flipped the car around, started beeping, giving this person a finger, like and actually turned out it was like one of the girls in the shop that works. <laughs> it was her husband and her in the car and I just just probably listen to this right. Yeah, and <laughs> you apologize, Yeah, with my apology. Like I was so embarrassed, I just wondered like and, uh, 
I can sit like, you know, <laughs> all the bark bit, all the bark bit. I don't think this is too bad. I think I think this is a lot worse. You're still doing, it, you know. Yeah. You know, Fifty years. Fifty maybe. years. So lots more embarrassing moments. Um, controversial opinions. Um. Just one will do. Just one will do. Uh, well, I personally think beer tastes weird. Beer tastes weird. In the can. can. Yeah, like um, a good example would be like what you do. Have you ever had what you do before? No. No. Well, if you do get it, get it like. Get it in the pint, like don't get it in the can, it just tastes like. I don't know, it's kind of worse. I think that's quite a common opinion, is it not? I think so, yeah. yeah. Do you have any other ones? Um, so would you rather be hot or cold? Like, you know, just no. in general, do you rather be hot or cold? Hold on, I'm doing it. Yeah, I got that. I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do it. I thought you were hot. Yeah, I'm actually the same as well. Okay. Because I've actually asked a few people. Um, <laughs> I make my mind and they're like, oh, I'd rather be cold. Yeah. I, I can't stand cold, like, I'd rather be, like, You're in a hot coffee. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and a hot coffee can be hot and cold. Okay. Okay. I, I don't think that's controversial. I don't, I don't, think think, I don't know whether you mean anybody No, no, I don't. <laughs> um, how did you become interested in the person channel? Um, yeah, what got me interested in the person channel was, like, uh, like I was saying, like, I was into, like, uh, swimming, like, personal, uh, I see them yeah. and uh, like uh, I don't work quite hard. But that's what I wanted to do. And it's not this is not like this is this is the second best thing I wanted to do. I always done this as a hobby. Like mm-hmm. in the meantime, and uh, like I was just in grafting recruitment for years, just never seemed to have got that opportunity to get a job. And then the, that like that time of period when I was waiting for getting a job, like I was just obsessed. Like I was just getting obsessed with the gym, watching YouTubers like Eddie Hall, like strongest man in the world, and like. It's just like, I think exercise is just like, in general, like, yeah. super underrated and how much it can change people's lives. Yeah, absolutely. And like, that really got me motivated, saying like, this is, this is really cool. Like, this is, exercise is so underrated, like, yeah. there's so much we should be doing. Like, but Do you want to say anything to Eddie Hall if he's watching this? He's probably not. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to put it right there, he's probably not. He's but... my motivation, why I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Eddie. Um, what would you say is your favourite aspect of training with clients? Uh, you know what it actually is? I actually think it's um, building a bond and friendship. Yeah. I think that's really, I think that's, it goes a long way. Like, um, I think like building a bond and like friendship with people. And you come in, you ask about your life, you, put, you know what's going on in their lives. And, and like they're going off and they're telling, oh like Stuart is a great personal trainer. They're telling their friends stuff like that. It's just a great way to get. Depends on what you Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then obviously another one as well is like consistency. If they come here and they work hard, they're going to get the results they get. Just like anything, and like just a bit of an auto, yeah. work hard and get what you deserve. Like. Yeah. Um, and what would you say is your, has been your biggest struggle? Like, how would you ever come to the power of your still struggle? No, 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 I don't think I have. Uh, I did, I feel like confidence was definitely a big uh, factor when, in general, like, I mean, before I even started training in the gym itself, like, I had no confidence, like, psychologically, no confidence, and physically, no confidence. I wasn't happy the way I looked, I had no confidence. When I went to to the job interviews, no confidence. Even socialising with people is just socially awkward. Like yeah. I just feel like like the gym has made me a lot more physically confident and even like just coming here, like just like confident getting to know people. Yeah. I didn't have that. Like I felt like I don't know why, but I felt like I got that from yeah. going to the gym. Yeah. And you go to the gym as well, like you can you, you meet new people, you talk about the gym, you see them outside of the gym. But it's just it's just great. Like that's great, it's like some, the confidence. some people I think find the gym very intimidating them, you know, it's almost their confidence crusher, yeah. as it were, so it's good that you kind of find the opposite of training is giving you more confidence. Um, what would you say, or who would you say are the three most influential people in your life? Well, Eddie Hall quite well. Eddie? Yeah, it'd be Eddie. Um, you know another one as well, I actually, I think uh, Tyson Fury, like, I know that a lot of people wouldn't agree with that, like, but I think that he's really motivated, especially after, like, with young people. Was the better boxer in the two fights, but just thought they hold like the whole match time and then getting up yeah. and then winning the next like, fight. Like, <laughs> yeah, Undertaker. Yeah, I guess like with anything more like that, that was cool. Like that was cool. Maybe talk about that like the next twenty years, and then another one would probably be like I think the likes of Big Mitchell. I just think Aldo is such a big influence. Like just on the pitch and offside the pitch, but he's just a big nice guy. Which Ronaldo? Oh, the Cristiano Ronaldo, the one that plays for Manchester. Oh, that's, that's awesome. It's, it's a pity he didn't play for Liverpool back in the day. Like, I'm a Messi fan, but 
right? Well, yeah, I Insurance sure. review, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that would have been a good one for the condo price of anyone, though. Yeah, well, these are one. <laughs> we'll back up there, these are Yeah. <laughs> um, what common myth in the health and fitness industry do you want to debunk right here, right now? Oh. If there's one thing that kind of keeps cropping up. Uh, yeah, I think a common one is that, like, no pain, no gain. I think that's actually a big one. Uh, because, uh, like, you probably know yourself is true. I think, like, yeah, like, a slight bit of dis- discomfort is normal when it comes to, like, the gym. Like, that's normal, but, like, anything, like, unusual, like, sharp pains or pains that you shouldn't be getting. Like, if you're doing arm day and you're getting sore backs or something, yeah. like, it's not. Like, joint pain and things like that. So that's so nothing to do with the gym. Like, yeah. you should probably go and see, like, a physio or it's a doctor. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah no, that's a good one. Um, that. There's a lot of people who have that mindset. Of, it's not always true. Like, it's not always true. And there's a there's the right sort of pain, the wrong sort of pain, that right. Um, okay, now for our final question. It's, I know you've I think I've told you about this one before. Yeah, I've yeah, yeah. yeah. about it. Would you rather get chased by one horse sized duck or 100 duck sized horses? Uh, I think I would have to go with the 100 ducks. Like, uh, one because <laughs> it's something very yeah. scary, yeah. I think you've got a better survival rate. I can tell you thought a lot about this. Like, you're probably you're probably staying up all night thinking about this. Because it's yeah, a little random one, like, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. Uh, I think I'll go with the smaller ones because I think it might be like, like more like a survival. Yeah. So, like, if it's massive, like, what's the chance of you surviving? Like, yeah. if you're going to get attacked or anything, like, you probably die. Hundreds of them, though. Like, hundreds. Imagine hundreds. Imagine hundreds of dogs just coming out. Yeah, so like are the ducks small or are the normal size ducks? They're 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 normal they're yeah, they're normal ducks. They're normal ducks. ducks. Yeah, yeah. actually they're quite a lot to be honest. Yeah. But yeah, no, I'm not sticking with my opinion. Yeah, I just think a four size ducks are scary looking, I think even that's a little bit like it's gonna be a big thing from each other. We're just like we're gonna we're gonna hit it like it doesn't work. Just gonna hit it, but like <laughs> At least hopefully there's nothing we have to worry about. Have you got a joke for us? Yeah, I think I do. Yeah, so we're on them. Like, what, uh, it's bad with bread. Okay. Um, what's bread and bad for your teeth? A brick. Let's do it like that. Do you like that one? Can you use that one? You can, yeah. Let's see that one. So, Jack, thank you very much. Yeah. Um, that concludes our interview. Um, hopefully, you've got a little Jack a little bit better and you can get to know him even better in the gym uh, whenever you book in. Jack's going to be here on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. So, yeah, thank you, Jack. And the next part of the show is our news of the week article. So each week I'm going to pick out an interesting fitness or health related news topic and we'll uh, hopefully discuss it. If I find it interesting, hopefully you do as well. So this week's one, it came actually a couple of weeks ago back in April. It wasn't picked up so you might have missed it or you might not have heard. But uh, it's it's good news in many ways. It was a story that was... uh, about research that has been conducted and it's in the British Journal of Sports Medicine. You can look it up and read it for yourself and you can fact check me if you want. Um, the title of the study was Physi- Physical Inactivity is Associated with a High Risk for Severe COVID-19 Outcomes, a study in 48,440 adult patients. So basically they compared um, all of this, uh, all of these patients, 48,440 of them from 1st of January 2020 to the 21st of October 2020, so nearly 10 months, over 10 months. And they wanted to compare hospitalisation rates, intensive care unit admissions and mortality for patients with COVID-19 who were consistently inactive, doing some activity or consistently meeting physical activity guidelines. So the conclusion or the results were patients with COVID-19 who were consistently inactive had a greater risk of hospitalisation, admission to ICU and death due to COVID-19 than patients who were consistently meeting physical activity guidelines. Patients who were consistently inactive also had a greater risk of hospitalisation due to admission to the ICU and death due to COVID-19 than patients who were doing some physical activity. The results really shouldn't be surprising to us. So they're basically advising that we promote exercise routines more so and that they should be incorporated into routine medical care. Now, um, I think it seems like a common sense thing to suggest that exercise is good for us. I don't think we need a news flash for that. Um, I'm sorry this article is kind of boring. I thought it, I thought it was interesting. I thought it was interesting that a study was needed first of all to 
uh, determinist. And I also thought it was funny that it kind of contradicts a lot of the protocols that have been established in the last year in dealing with it. It's kind of sad in one sense, but it's also, you know, it's a nice to kind of go, I told you so. There's a lot of people out there thinking now, I told you so. Sitting in the house, probably wasn't the best idea. Um, sitting lying, or lying up watching Netflix, probably wasn't the best idea. Increasing your metabolism, increasing your fitness levels cardiovascularly, increasing your strength. Better ideas, I would say. So it begs the question, why were the gyms closed? Um, why were they closed for seven out of the last 12 months? Um, the data there's no data suggests that there was any outbreaks in gyms. There's no data that suggests there was any spread in gyms. Gyms are some of the cleanest places um, in society. There's regular cleaning protocols and they've been established for a long time. If there's sweat on a bench, it's wiped. It's common courtesy. Now, the extent to which that has increased over the last year has gotten to possibly superstitious levels. Some people sanitize their hands and then they, you know, do their own weights that they've cleaned already and then they sanitize their hands again. But I think it's just a, a habit and a routine people have gotten into without even thinking about it. But would a, a much better protocol maybe have been to advise maybe do some exercise, maybe eat well, sleep well. Instead of sit, sit in your house, don't go outside, you will get fined if you walk up the mountain. Now, I've heard I've heard a few people coming back and saying, well, you don't need gyms to get fit. You don't need gyms. You know, you can go for a walk, you can go for a run, you can go up the mountain. First of all, you couldn't go up the mountain because you would get fined if you lived too far away from it. Other thing is, the people who normally say, oh, you don't need a gym to exercise, you can work out at home. Those are normally the type of people who don't work out at all and sorry to cast general dispersions and uh, generalizations on people but that's just what like i'm sure you're nodding your head and going that's actually true there's a lot of people who have said that and that is the case i know it to be true as well and the other thing is not everybody has access to heavy equipment not everybody has access at home to dumbbells to to barbells heavy enough to do significant um benefit to the human body and the price of them happened to double in the last year it was very difficult to actually get access to purchase them because the supply chain was fractured and the demand was through the roof. So, no, you can't do everything at home that you could possibly do in the gym, at least not um, unless you want to spend thousands and thousands of pounds and have to wait months and months on end. And for anyone who says that walking is the only exercise you need, I think anybody who knows very much about exercise will tell you that extra walking shouldn't even be considered exercise. It's actually considered non exercise activity thermogenesis okay it's called neat and it's called neat for a reason because it isn't it isn't proper exercise it's activity yes i'll give you that but it is not exercise so if you're thinking walking is all you need to do according to this study you have a better chance of fighting off COVID 19 than uh, someone who's just never ever walks the length of themselves but if that's the extent of your exercise i would highly recommend that you set the bar a little bit higher and uh, try and implement some other forms of slightly more intense exercise, gradually building it up, of course. I'm going to talk about all that sort of stuff in the on the show anyway, over the coming weeks and months. But yeah, hopefully you find that article interesting. Sorry if I got on my soapbox, but it's a, a subject that's very close to my heart. And uh, yeah, I, I like I kind of like this study because it, um, it kind of backed up what everybody thought. And uh, yeah, hopefully the next time there's any sort of an outbreak, and this just, just doesn't apply to COVID-19. Exercise helps stave off the vast majority of uh, illnesses out there. And if it happens to run in your family, whether it is cancer, heart disease, whatever, there's a lot of a lot of diseases out there. And uh, exercise can help you, basically. That's what the study's trying to suggest here with COVID-19. There's plenty of other studies that um, imply that for lots of other diseases as well. So... Until next time, if you have any other uh, any other news stories you'd like me to discuss or to, to chat about or make me aware of, do send them in to info at crossfunctionalfitness.co.uk. Now it is time for some frequently asked questions. So this week's one is quite similar to what Jack was talking about today and it's about confidence in the gym. I don't have any confidence to go to the gym on my own. What should I do? There's a few things you can do about this. There's a number of reasons. You have to ask yourself, why are you not confident in going to the gym? Now, typically, we tend not to be confident about things we don't really know that much about. 
you get bluffers and things like that but you know what I mean if you don't know what you're doing you're not going to be confident that's just the way it is so what I would suggest is either you get a quality personal trainer someone who can show you how to do things how to squat how to deadlift how to how to press how to do pull-ups how to do all the basics and do them well um obviously i'm gonna be biased and suggest ourselves here cross functional fitness but if you don't live in the warren point area we're also in dremore just to, to put that out there if you happen to live somewhere overseas if some by some miracle you're listening to this this podcast on the other side of the world look at reviews get in contact with people get recommendations from people um you know of a good personal trainer just put it on facebook ask somebody can you recommend a personal trainer and chances are one of your friends will know a good personal trainer so they'll be able to teach you all of the good all of the big lifts all of the quality lifts good quality movement and then whenever you're on your own you could go into the gym and do some lifting yourself um, another suggestion i would have is get a plan get a plan together don't just go from machine to machine but actually have a plan have a program that you can follow and you can execute to the letter and improve um, every session and every week if you have a plan you're not going to look like a bit of a clown going from thing to thing and just looking for for things to do you're actually going to have a, a thing to follow and you can execute it with precision and with good form and the other suggestion we have is get a buddy get a friend to go with you so you know safety numbers and all of that if you get a friend who can train with you that's gonna make you feel much more confident as well The next frequently asked question is, do I need to vary my workout to see results? Um, this question is, is, is controversial, I suppose, in some ways. If you Google it and you ask people, a typical trainer, they'll say, yeah, yeah, you need to vary the workout to see results. You need to keep varying it. Now, this depends on who it is that's asking the question. So if you are someone who's a complete novice, you've never been to the gym, you've never done a workout, no, you don't need to vary your workout very much for the first six months and by vary the workout what i mean by that is you don't need to do a million different types of exercises you don't need to um just try and reinvent the wheel you don't need to start changing grips and messing about with things like that or doing different variations of squatting what you need to do is get four five six exercises and stick with them add a little bit more weight to the bar every single time you go into the gym just a little bit kilo two kilos whatever it is you can muster You'll be able to add more to your lower body work than your upper body. But no, you do not need to vary it every time. And you need to have a plan. You need to be able to see a rigid plan and stick to it and keep adding weight to it. That's how you get stronger. That's how you get better, more efficient. Now, six months, a year down the line, that's a different question. That's when you might need to start varying things up because, uh, yeah, your body will get inevitably get stronger. And maybe three times a week, three sets of five or three sets of ten or whatever it is you're doing, Maybe you need to change that up a bit. Maybe you need to change it. So if you're doing high reps, do lower reps, heavier weight. If you're doing low reps, heavier weight, maybe do high, higher reps um, with lighter weight. And try and build a different aspect of your your uh, fitness. But having said that, it depends on your goals. It really does depend on your goals as to whether you need to, to vary it. Now, if you're going for a run as well, say you're doing running, you might notice you get more efficient. You can do the same route faster. You might burn less calories, your body will work out how to do it more efficiently. Maybe you will need to vary it, vary it, but that might not be for a very long time. Again, depending how experienced you are. So if you're really experienced, you might need to start moving the goalposts a little bit more regularly. And if you're a novice, absolutely not. Just stick with what the basic plan, do it well, add a little bit more weight. And you can't go wrong. And the final frequently asked question this week how can exercise help my mental health? Now, after the year most of us have been through, if you've been exercising regularly, I'm sure you're well aware that exercise is incredibly beneficial for your mindset as well as your body. Um, the research would tend to suggest that it does indeed help reduce stress. Um, you might also realise that you get better self-confidence, you get um, your anxiety alleviated and you also improve your concentration decision making ability as well has been shown to improve after doing weight training um, and a big boost of endorphins that makes you feel great makes you feel happy even though you've just been through a tough um, gym session it makes you feel great and that, that's the reason why it's those, that rush of endorphins that release so 
yeah, exercise can absolutely is pretty much beyond the shadow of a doubt. Now that exercise can help with your mental health, and you can probably if you test it out, you know that from experience. If you're feeling a bit frustrated or tired or just anxious, so many aspects of of um mental health, exercise can help with that. Weight training, doing something. Just some days you'll not feel like it. You'll not even feel like getting out of bed. And that's a that's a victory in itself, being able to get out of bed if you're really suffering um, mentally. So just setting a little goal, just a little one. And some days you'll not feel like going to the gym. But what I tend to do in those days is I set myself a goal of let's just do the warm-up. Let's just do one set, one little warm-up set and see how I feel. And 99 times out of 100, I feel like completing the workout then. So yes, exercise can certainly help with your mental health. It can uh, alleviate all sorts of stress. As well so yeah hopefully that answers that if you've got any questions you would like me to answer next week just uh, send them in the info at crossfunctionalfitness.co.uk and i'll be happy to to help so that is us for this week and that's the podcast concluded thank you for listening and thank you to jack for agreeing to take part and uh, being grilled by me in the hot seat um, sorry about the uh, the audio quality for the interview, it's just that we were doing it as part of a video as well. So there's a video on Facebook you can and, you, and Instagram, you can see us in all of our glory. Um, just in case you think you're missing out by just getting the audio here. Or maybe you can watch our lips and do some lip reading to see what we're actually saying. But yeah, as I said, I apologise about the sound quality for the, the interview. Hopefully we can get some microphones and better quality gear hooked up in future for interviews and... Uh, yeah you'll get more out of it but yeah if you have any questions for jack or myself um feel free to send them in at info at crossfunctionalfitness.co.uk and we'd love to help you out and get back to you or if you've got any complaints about some of jack's outrageous opinions you can send them in there as well but yeah thanks for joining me and i'll see you next week take care